Hi, it's Heather from Thicket Works, and today I'm sharing with you this Medieval Ironwork Creative SVG Pack. This is something a little different for this channel. So rather than working on a completed project from beginning to end, I simply want to introduce you to these creative elements and show you a few of the ways that I've found to make use of them. A lot of time and effort has gone into developing these designs, which are based on authentic Gothic metalwork. This set of files will yield over 80 individual elements from each 8.5 by 11 sheet of cardstock that you choose to cut with it. I chose to cut a single sheet of 8.5 by 11 cardstock to see just how far this would go. And I'm happy to report that even after making use of many of these pieces, I still have a lot left over. Now, of course, you can do anything that you would like with these designs. But one of the things that occurred to me was that they'd be really fun to use when creating altered books. I have a lot of altered books in my stash that are awaiting further embellishment and this particular piece created several years ago seems to be a perfect fit for this really ornate iron strapping these pieces can add a real medieval flair to your work or even give them a touch of a fairy tale vibe I'm using Zig two-way glue to press them into place. Now there are a lot of these corner elements included and to play with them I just cut up some old pieces of scrapbook paper. These corner elements are being used in a similar fashion to photo corners but they have just a little more flair than the typical designs. I'm gluing them onto each of the four corners of these little antique postcard images. I love the classic combination of metallics and black. So I'm reaching for metallic aged brass, metallic wax, and sprucing up a few of these elements before placing them onto the surface of this altered box. There are many ways that you could add metallic luster to these elements. This is just one option. I decided to work with a whole series of these architectural vintage postcard images. I'm not sure what their ultimate home will be probably within the pages of an altered book, but for now, I'm just preparing them for the day when they find their forever homes. I like working with distinct individual elements like this because they give you so much scope for experimenting and playing with the designs. Gluing these pieces down into distinct patterns is very satisfying. Yep, I love the elegant flavor that they add to these lovely old images. The really elaborate and refined hinge motifs look surprisingly striking against some of the more simple designs. I really love that effect. Yep, just a few more touches and we have a nice collection. Now I'm going to be adding the larger version of these elaborate hinge motifs onto a tin that has been treated to fire patina. And if you're not sure what I mean when I say fire patina, there'll be a link in the description to a video about that technique. 
The two pieces are simply snipped apart and glued to the tin on either side of the hinges. Yep, I think that looks pretty cool. To dress it up just a little bit, I'm putting tiny dots of triple thick gloss glaze onto the motifs and then adding these tiny metallic studs that are intended as manicure embellishments. I like the way that this adds a little bit of three-dimensionality to the designs. And to increase that even further, I'm going to dab a layer of UV resin over the top using the tip of a toothpick. Now I try to stay within the lines of the motif with varying degrees of success, but the overall effect at the end of the process is really pretty, or at least I think so. It takes a bit of patience to cover all those little curlicues, but once the resin has been applied, it just needs to be cured in sunlight or under a UV lamp. I'm adding a few more of these metal studs to these tiny cross forms. Yep, I like it. There, nice little metallic touch. A clear ruby colored rhinestone helps dress this one up. And here's the final effect with the UV resin cured on top of the cut pieces of cardstock. Now I'm going to be gluing this more masculine hinge design onto the top of this little chest that I built the other day. Super glue is being used as a top coat for this piece. And a little more UV resin on this focal piece for the front of the chest. Next, I'm going to experiment with embedding one of these pieces into a layer of ultra thick clear embossing powder. So I apply Versamark to the top of this Altoid type tin, sprinkle it with the ultra thick embossing powder, heat it up with my heat tool, and while it's still hot, I press the paper into the embossing powder. Once it cools down, I apply more Versamark and additional layers of UT until I get a really thick and glossy coating over the entire piece. These are just a few of the limitless ways that you can use these medieval ironwork elements from this SVG bundle. I think my favorite has to be this tin with the UV resin coated ironwork hinge motifs, but a second favorite is this one embedded in the ultra thick embossing enamel. And it's such a great addition to any altered book. And of course, the little medieval chest. Yep, all of these projects were extremely satisfying to create. And I look forward to using these elements again and again over the years. It's having options like this that make working with the Cricut Maker so dear to my heart. I absolutely love this technology and I'm firmly committed to exploring as many ways as possible for it to enhance our creative work. As always, thank you for hanging out with me today. And until next time, Bye.